Hey, what's up, my friends? My name is Beto. I'm with my beautiful wife, Millie. And we want to tell you about Sound of Hope. It's it's almost like a sequel to Sound of Freedom. Mm -hmm. This movie produced with uh, Angel Studios that was released last year. That was a total hit. Talking about how to care for kids that have been hurt because of trafficking. And in this case, The movie Sound of Hope is focusing on helping kids who have been mistreated or abused in their own homes, mm -hmm. specifically here in the United States. And they talk about a specific case that happened in a small community in the east side of the state of Texas. And it's a beautiful, wonderful movie about caring for one another, about being a community, about being a true believer, mm. a true Christian even. And what was your, what was your, some of your insights, Millie, as you watch this movie that you want to share? It's unbelievable, Beto. Imagine 22 families adopting 77 kids. That is a life changing, like so inspired, like it's so strong. I really believe that we need more of these movies, Beto. Like good job, Angel Studios. What you're doing is awesome. That is going to transform the history, Beto. I honestly recommend this movie 100%. I so inspired. I myself, I, I was adopted, Beto. Mm -hmm. So I know what it is to be rescued, you know. And you was mentioning before that even Christ was adopted by Joseph. Mm -hmm. No, he's, so this he's dead. yeah. <laughs> the, this movie is totally from the Bible. It's like so godly, so gorgeous. Like imagine in the U.S. the 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 black and the Hispanics are the ones who are the most in the system. Okay. So that's how we can see right in this mom the, in this movie. If you notice, like most of the the kids were African American. Mm -hmm. or Hispanic. Do you see an Anglo in the movie? No. Not many. <laughs> no, because that was their case, you know, was based on a true story. Mm -hmm. And we see the, the, the African-American and the Latino, the Mexican. <laughs> yeah, there. there's one Mexican in the, in the chapel, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a wonderful movie about hope. And yeah, I agree with you, Millie. I feel like this is not a movie just for Christians. I think it's a movie for people who are almost like questioning Christians, like what are you guys doing to really show that you're following this Christ, you know, that to really show that you are loving one another. So I think this movie m brings up the case that if we basically like we put our actions where our mouth is, right? We put our, our words into action And we're not just talking about the talk. We're not just preaching. We're living it out. So I think that was really and how, inspiring. How this pastor was the example. Mm. Because he did it. So all his members were, were like inspired and they started doing the same. Because he was preaching to them. And I can feel that Beto in our church when pastors have some uh, kind of idea what he does. He will let us know, like, look, we're going to work in this and we all working here and there. And he moves, you know, mm -hmm. by the Holy Spirit. He's moving by the Holy Spirit and we all are walking in the same direction. So this is a call for leaders, Beto, in their mm -hmm. churches to have a message that says, you know what? We can do this. How are we going to impact the world? How are we going to transform the world through love? And who is love, Beto? Jesus is love. So he is the one who transformed the living. Mm -hmm. Super impactful, Millie, because we are Latinos, right? We are, we are originally from Mexico. And like you were saying, no, most of the people that maybe sometimes are in this system of foster care or into adoption, like we have, we personally know, we have a lot of friends who have either, you know, adopted through foster care or are within the foster care system still and it, to see them you know maybe like an anglo family taking care like really loving and adopting mm -hmm. a, a latino kid mm -hmm. right and welcoming them to their family and giving them 
their name, like their last name and saying, now you are part of our family. Mm. It's, it's really impactful, Millie, because you were saying, right, when you grew up and you know, your mom died, your parents, your dad left, and then you were adopted. Luckily, it was, I mean, you were kind of like adopted within your that family, right? Family. Your, your, yeah. your uncles took care of you, but that's adoption, really. Mm. And so you have experienced that, you know, as a, as a young Mexican girl. You experienced that and to know that that shaped you and that gave you hope even maybe in the in the worst times of your life. And to know, Millie, that the, in this movie, they portrayed it so well, adopting and being in the foster care. And as people of faith, it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. Mm -hmm. Right. And for these leaders to say, we're not only going to be the, the leaders of this and saying we're going to be the first ones to adopt a child yeah. and to invite the rest of the congregation to do it mm. we're going to take the hardest case mm. right because we want to lead by example and by saying you know the, the, god loves on the toughest kids mm. out there right so that was just so and hopeful something Millie. else that i love how all the community came in prayer mm. like they were not alone they were yes. fighting together praying together doing life together we need that better to success mm -hmm. you can do it by yourself you can do it alone you need to belong to a system to a group mm -hmm. to a church to a community you know and and it is beautiful to see better the the whole message if if you think so jesus w was adopted by by joseph but mm -hmm. we are adopted by jesus too mm -hmm. So we need to belong. God is the creator of the families. God create families because mm -hmm. uh, he is the one who adopts us. And, mm -hmm. and that feeling when you walk in this life, thinking that you belong to God, that you are a child of God, it's like you change the chip. Now you have, you belong to him. So it's, it's not, you're not alone. You're never alone. So that confidence that value, it's unbelievable. That transformed your life. Mm -hmm. to, know, to have the knowledge that he is with you, it's so powerful. And he is preparing a home for us in heaven. That's a yeah. level. So that way, you know, we know we want to suffer in this world, but having that knowledge that he is for us and with us help us to to pass our tribulations to pass any kind of problem and have joy in our lives even knowing that we're gonna suffer you know we're gonna lose our loved ones we're gonna pass for sickness for uh a lot of bad disease or whatever, you know, circumstance in life. Sometimes we don't have food in our table. We don't have money to buy mm -hmm. our needs. But you know what? Knowing that God is in us, we can eat that little piece of bread and that cup of water knowing that it's enough for us today. And we pray and he will provide for the next day with mm -hmm. joy, glory, you know, like put put him high and praise him all the time yes so good millie that's exactly right you know they say they have this here in america this is a phrase i've heard uh, that's super interesting is it takes a village to raise a child right and that's the mm -hmm. perfect example in it. this movie it takes an entire community to raise all these children right like 70 77 children Raised by 22 yeah. families, doing it in yes. community together, mm -hmm. praying for one another when the times get got tough. You know, they say, we're doing this together. You know, God didn't say it was going to be easy, but we're going to do it together and he's with us. And I was trying to think that now I remember that I have more friends who are their pastors and they they do the same. We have this beautiful example of, um, you know, the... These pastors have five adopted kids and five by their own. Mm -hmm. And guess what? His community is doing the same. Yes. They're, they're all adopting. They're leading so by example. They're like, yeah. ah, 
uh, I need to talk to my pastor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good one, Millie. Uh, yeah, it's so good. You know, so our I commend you know all the people that are doing this here in America who care so much. We personally, like I said, we we know so many people around our circles who are like, this is not just because we're Christian. It's because we. I mean, technically, it is because they're Christian, right? But they, it, it's a step of faith. Mm. And they're living it out, Millie, and it's so inspiring. Like people within our community, like like you said, you know, even in in uh, in groups of people where the lead pastor is doing it, and then all the people in their congregation are doing it too, because they want to see this problem come to an end. Mm. You know, they they really think they can do it in this nation where they can say, okay, we don't want more foster kids in the no foster kids in the foster care system we can tackle this together you know if everybody like takes one child we'll eradicate this within our generation right it's possible and i think that's what this movie shows that within one generation it was possible for this community Beto, on the eastern problem, side of texas every problem have a solution mm. you know when people always is looking at the problem uh, it is so hard you know, we need to look at the solution, what we can do. Yes. What is something uncomfortable for me in the system? Well, sounds like that problem, maybe you can step on it and be the solution for that problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So two last things, Millie. Uh, one would be, what would be your call maybe for Latinos like us mm -hmm. who are here in the U.S. who usually have been the receiving end of this, right? Like we as Latinos are the ones that got adopted, you know, mm. uh, I'm just generalizing, right? But we are the ones that maybe we're coming out of the foster care system. Um, what would you say to people that, that as Latinos, we feel like, oh, that's for someone who's Anglo to do and continue to do. So basically you want me to talk to you? Yeah. Beto? yeah. Talk to me, talk to whomever. Uh, it Who is, you need to it talk is with. beautiful, Beto, because I feel like a, can be a um, fight with not just the system. We are fighting with principles and spirits. Mm. You know, basically we're fighting with the devil because what they do to that kids, it's evil. Mm. You know, the, these kids are abused, sexually mm. abused. They're, they, they, um, beaten, beaten, you yeah. know, so they creep them. Oh, ¿cómo se dice? Cripple them? Cripple them. Yes. It is disgusting. It's evil. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to fight that? The only way we're going to fight that is through prayer. To pray, to come to Jesus and say like, you know what, Lord? You know, that's, that's how we always pray, Beto. And we ask God, let me be your hands. Let me be your feet. And whatever you want me to do, I will do it. Really? So let's believe that. I feel like as Latina and I was adopted, like I know and I pray to God that he's going to have his perfect time. So when that opportunity come to me to say yes, to step on it, and, and I think God have his perfect time. No, sometimes like in this case, you know, in the movie, we have a perfect example. The pastor was denying that, like, I don't want to foster a kid. How? We have no money. We have no this, no that. Like, it's impossible. That's not for me, right? And she's telling him, like, do you pray? Are you talking to God? Because he's telling me to do this, mm -hmm. right? And one day he wake up and like, oh, my gosh, yes, I'm going to do this. This is my son, and I'm going to raise you, and you are my son, Right. Um, I'm so thankful. And, and I know people better who are Latino, too, and they adopt kids. Mm. Probably we don't do that as often as Americans, but Latinos does that, too. And most of the time is with our families. Mm. Wow. We adopt our nieces, our nephews, grandkids. Uh, the, the grandmothers are always there because uh, as a Latino, we always care for our family and our families first. I know so many grandmothers that are uh, adopting one, two, three kids. It's unbelievable, Beto. Mm -hmm. uh, I, even my, my grandma did it for me for mm -hmm. uh, such a 
period of her life mm -hmm. she adopted me you know so god bless all the grandmothers uncles uh, aunts that step up step for that kids in need mm -hmm. for their own family it's not easy it's not easy for both parts it's not easy for the kid and i know it's not easy for the grown-ups as a trying to be a family because it's so much damage beto so much damage in that poor kids and but you, guess what love wins at the end of the day always wins god always get, wins love always wins there we go okay yeah so awesome movie go see it highly recommend millie what's your final emoji for this movie i will give you an inspire emoji Inspired so inspired. emoji there we go inspired emoji for millie and i will give it guess what Holly. a divine Holly. emoji divine emoji yeah i love this movie i think there's nothing more divine than adoption uh, i have a few episodes millie where actually my i think it's my third episode ever uh when i was still doing single episodes like without you in english on the english stream where I talk to people about the foster care system. There's a person here in our community who helps teenagers as they're coming out of the foster care system and giving them tools and resources to step into the real world. Her name is Lisa Casteter. So highly recommend, you know, going back to those episodes. If you want to, uh, you can find them on christianpodcast.com and just go to the, you know, the, the episodes on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. If you're listening now, just go to the the really old episodes the first ones and you'll see them there i have an episode where i talk with uh daniel daniel uh, he's with kids give to kids so he came out of the foster care system and now his dream and vision is like i want to give gifts every single christmas to all the kids that don't have one and he, he created a system that's called kids give to kids you know so he tells me his story it's an epic story he's like now i'm unstoppable you know i had all these obstacles and um i have an episode with a pastor josh harrison that he adopted even though in his family they could have had their own um kids. biological kids they said no we're gonna actually take care of somebody Uh, and treat them as their own kids so it's really inspiring too so you can check that episode too just go to the older episodes thank you so much for being here you know if you like this this episode we are latinos who are stepping out and talking about faith christ we have interviews with awesome people authors politicians you name it and we also have a spanish stream where you can listen to us in our native tongue in espanol el lenguaje del cielo Mm. So if you like us, you know, like and subscribe and we'll have more episodes for you. Thank you for being the light and the salt in this world. We love you. Ciao. Amen. Bye-bye. High five.